Seven Mountains this game is big. We have a bunch of fun, practice all day, throw some doubles. And just have a good time. Uh, and the jump is, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty long, 60 feet. So, yeah, I'm stoked. Oh, it's nice to have competition in your hometown. Uh, you know, you have a lot of friends and family coming out, and uh, you know, jumping in a place that's familiar to you is nice. So you have a lot of friends and family coming out? I don't think so. <laughs>
ski making history here in Morgula have a long, long tradition. Uh, and it uh, start uh, in the beginning of the 1800s. Um, Sunne Norheim was born in 1825 and uh, the ski play and the competition start in about 1850. And uh, Sondre was a clever boy but uh, he was, wasn't interesting and not um, satisfied with the equipment. So he started to uh, work with the equipment. So he made the heel binding and he also made the carving in the skis. And uh, it's the beginning of the modern uh, ski history because you have now skis, it's more easy to turn. Uh, and you have the binding, so you can jump and uh, the skis will not fall off. Um, to the rest of the world, uh, it starts in 1868. Uh, Sondre goes to Oslo and uh, competes uh, with the different other people. And he was the first man who used the heel binding and he also was the first man who used these carving skis. Uh, and uh, for the people in Oslo, it was the first time they see that. And um, now, uh, you see they can use the skis on a, all the ways than they do before. One of the, uh, one of the, I guess the, the, the heart of why we're gathering here is to kind of help you as skiers get in touch with the way skiing has changed and how it began. And how it began was in a very simple, humble, playful way. If you think about the res average resort experience today, it's very, very different from what we're doing now tonight.
After Verley, we made our way to another part of the Telemark region. We wanted to get up to Gaustatopen, which is one of the highest peaks in the country. We uh, cruised into this old NATO base that uh, was built some 50 or whatever years ago. and It was mostly used for military stuff back then. It was top secret deal, but they just opened it up to the public a few years back. You can take an elevator up and uh, ski down from the top. We got there, it was kind of surreal because it was a super low-key place. It was built to be totally secret, so when you're walking in, you feel like you're kind of walking into somewhere where you're not supposed to be. But they've uh, decorated it up and changed it all around to show the history of the place, and they have a bunch of murals and things on the walls and maps to show you what's going on. And you start out in the this round building and we'll go in through this tunnel, take this train straight into the middle of the mountain where then you get into another train and go straight up through the middle at like 39 or 40 degrees or something, up through the middle of the mountain. And then you come through all this tunnel system and then you pop out on the backside. Yeah, well, I Still having trouble sleeping All alone All alone But it's not like I get much lower tonight No, it's not like I get much lower
Gostatopin is a huge mountain and we were looking forward to getting into some bigger lines on some big terrain. Um, we knew it was high alpine and that it was going to be weather affected and whatnot, but uh, when we got up there, the weather had been kicking hard and the wind was blowing in a big way and it was pretty hammered out. And uh, you know, we, we ski a lot on these trips and we go to a lot of places and we try to get the best skiing we can all over the place. But when you're dealing with mother nature, you know, <laughs> it's not really up to you. Sometimes you just got to deal with what happens. And at least in this place, in this situation, the skiing was almost part of the afterthought. Once we realized how bad the conditions had gotten, we knew it wasn't really going to be about the skiing. And after having gone through the tunnels and the elevators and all that, like the skiing was almost an afterthought anyways, because this place was so cool. And it was like nothing I'd ever seen before in my life.
It's golden. Alaska. I was actually born in Anchorage, but I grew up up there in the, right in the middle of the state. And uh, I started skiing when I was two years old, and pretty much my parents made me go every weekend. And when I say made me, I mean they forced me. They put me in the car, and I wanted to watch Saturday morning cartoons or whatever, but um, I ended up on the slopes. And somewhere around the time I was eight or ten, it started to it changed. I wanted to go. Yeah, I'm Spencer, 20 years old, um, from originally from Girdwood, Alaska. I grew up skiing there at Alieska. Um, going to think this is my second year going to school at MSU in Bozeman. So it was pretty fun to come back up here, kind of my home area, and really kind of come back up with more of a mindset to get on some bigger stuff, more so than I had back in high school. Am I supposed to look at the camera or do I look at you? My name is Andrew Shower and I grew up outside of Chicago. <laughs> Take two. I'm Andrew Shower, grew up outside of Chicago and I moved out to Montana to go to college out there. Got myself a degree in snow science and did a whole lot of skiing. And I say these guys, you know, all-star team, got the uh, original gangster, JT Robinson. Um, some new young guns coming in that are just totally legit. So, let's go.
eventually the snowpack started to settle out and we were able to get into these lines that we really wanted to ski and that's when it really kind of all came together and it was a whole lot of fun to see Spencer and Andrew and Dave just rally like I <laughs> it was really really impressive especially these young kids to see what they were willing to push and what they could actually handle I, I was worried they would try to bite off too much or try to ski too easy but they they knew their abilities they skied tough and they they got it done pretty much Explain to me what's going on right now. Well, Dave was nice enough to let us use his Lexus for the day while we were stranded at Anchorage Airport. So we've come here to design a money booter because he also wisely left all of his ski gear inside the Lexus. <laughs> so we're gonna do a little urban towing. 
So, Dave McGoffin, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm just about to turn 52. <laughs> uh, I drive a Lexus around and fly planes. When I was young, I had a head injury that permanently broke the switch in my brain that was supposed to tell me not to do things that are scary. <laughs> and I enjoy uh, quick toe-ins and money booters in the parking lot on my ski gear. And that's I think he's going to switch toe you in. <laughs> we should totally do that. <laughs> so, can you explain to me the snow science behind what we're doing? Well, the switch toe-in is optimal for style purposes, and the uh, mid-April snowpack in Anchorage is super unstable, so that's why we're trying to stay at low elevations here. Gotta get the NRS strap firmly locked into place. You don't want that going on you, because the Lord knows what could happen then. Shoot, this is dang near as fast as I'm 800 horsepower sled. More speed. More speed? Yeah. All right. Dropping in three, two, one. <laughs> Epic. I'm ready. Get it done. <laughs> nice line, Dave. <laughs> All right, dropping. Just out for a nice telemark, Steve. There you go, Dave. <laughs> 